Good morning. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. My dear brothers and sisters, on this Feast of the Ascension, we should ask ourselves this question, how are we doing? The feast presents us with an invitation to examine the relationship between the faith we profess every Sunday in the creed, you know, we recite at Mass, and our daily life. But now first, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, they have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most gravest fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary Ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Peace to people. 
I will celebrate this Mass for the end of abortion. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that we who believe that your only begotten Son, our Redeemer, ascended this day to the heavens, may in a spirit dwell already in heavenly realms, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. In the first book, Theophilus, I dealt with all that Jesus did and taught until the day he was taken up, after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen. He presented himself alive to them by many proofs after he had suffered, appearing to them during forty days and speaking about the kingdom of God. While meeting with them, he enjoined them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father about which you have heard me speak. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. When they had gathered together, they asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? He answered them, it is not for you to know the times or season that the Father has established by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witness in Jerusalem, throughout Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were looking on, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him from their sight. While they were looking intently at the sky as he was going, Suddenly, two men dressed in white garments stood beside them. They said, Men of Galilee, why are you standing there looking at the sky? This Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven, will return in the same way as you have seen him going into heaven. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God mounts his throne to shout of joy, a blare of trumpets for the Lord. God mounts his throne to shout of joy, a blare of trumpets for the Lord. All you people.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, may the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation resulting in knowledge of him. May the eyes of your hearts be enlightened, that you may know what is the hope that belongs to his call. What are the riches of glory in his inheritance among the holy ones? And what is the surpassing greatness of his power for us who believe, in accord with the exercise of his great might, which he worked in Christ, raising him from the dead and seating him at his right hand in the heavens, far above every principality, authority, power, and dominion, and every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the one to come. And he put all things beneath his feet, and gave him as head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of the one who fills all things in every way. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Yes, I love to observe our sky. 
In this morning first reading, it is said of the disciples that they were staring into the sky as Jesus took his leave of them and ceased to be present to them in a visible bodily way. They looked to the sky instinctively at the place above where God dwelt. Yet the question put to them by two men in the white is, Why are you standing there looking at the sky, this Jesus who has been taken up from you into heaven? will return in the same way as you have seen him going into heaven. You know, always, every year when we have this, you know, celebration, this feast and these readings, I try to see it, you know, disciples. First, Jesus is talking, so one level, right? And then they see, right? So what about there is heads? Right? You know, sometimes we can see similar picture. Think about a child with a balloon. And sometimes this balloon is accidentally... Right? And then what this child first is doing? Oh no, how nice! Until we cannot see this balloon. And then it's like looking at mommy or daddy. And what is doing the child? Crying, right? I very believe that it was the same about the apostles. You know, first they were happy again because they saw Jesus, and then, like first, like maybe there is mouth was maybe like and more open, open, right? And then they had a strong, probably feelings. And I would like to tell you, I can understand the apostles. Because often we are like them, lost, angry, lonely. They had these feelings twice. First time after Jesus' death on the cross, right? And today, the second time. After the first time, they were afraid. They came together, they locked the door and was like, oh my goodness, right? They were afraid. Second time was better. And you know when they really felt better? When they received Holy Spirit. So next Sunday will be important, right? But exactly, we have these feelings. And I would like to show you something else. When this, you know, pandemic was bigger and uh, we had more fears yes or not yes. yes I wish that you will tell me oh no but yes and uh, first think about January January beginning February we heard about the virus where we heard on TV so, but we hear that the virus is where? China. So, most people thought, China, so far. So, it's not about me, right? We are safe. It is natural to think. And I would like to show you that um, we had, I cannot tell we, because this time I was in Poland, but in the United States, people had this very similar feelings. You know when? 2001. What's happened? 9-11. Very often people in the United States thought that the war, it's maybe in some in Europe and maybe in Africa, right? But we have the ocean. We're safe, right? Until 9-11. How many people, maybe you remember, how many people were afraid? A lot. Probably the most. I remember this day I was a deacon. And this day I was a driver. My parish pastor's driver. We, we went, you know, it was his business trip to Krakow. We stopped. 
because we know we hear it on the radio, this news, we cannot believe. And uh, can we tell that 9-11 changed America? Can we tell that 9-11 changed whole world? Yes, a lot. Can we tell that the virus changed America? Can we tell that this virus changed the whole world? Do you see? So, you know, when we will see lives and centuries, people had a similar situation. So, fears, first, fear is not from God, but we are just humans. So, sometimes we are afraid, and exactly, we feel lonely, and we are upset, because it is first natural human reaction. So, you know, a couple of months ago, when I started to celebrate the Mass there, daily Mass Chapel most, and by myself with this camera, I heard before Easter that this year will be no Easter. And always I thought, I disagree, it's not true. We celebrated Easter, right? Jesus is risen, yes or yes? yes. Of course, because we have just one answer. Yes. And today we are celebrating this beautiful feast, the Ascension. So look about God, nothing is changed. The Bible is still the same, each word is the same. Can we change the Bible? Are you sure? Can we maybe remove something because we don't like it? I see your head. <laughs> I agree. But you know that some people did it. So then, if someone change, remove some pages, it is not Holy Bible, it's not from God. Because it's changed, right? We need to have full message. But I agree with you. So you know, it is okay to have sometimes these fears. But I would like to tell you, it is no, not okay to be afraid all the time. Because God is with us all the time. Jesus promised us that we will be not lonely, that we will be not orphans. He's always with us. And He said that I will send you a helper, the advocate. It is why just week after today, we'll celebrate Pentecost. And we know how powerful is Holy Spirit. It's a helper. We really are blessed. Even now, it's a little different that in the church you need to wear a mask. But I would like to show you, sometimes we have some groups of professional people they have to wear a mask daily. Think about doctors during surgery. Would you like to ask maybe a doctor that, no, please don't wear a mask during my surgery. <laughs> right? Because then we will know that, uh oh, can be, <coughs> right? So do you prefer that the doctor will wear a mask? Yes. Very good. And this doctor, when he has maybe a couple surgeries per day, or sometimes one surgery, is not just 15 minutes, but hours. Right? You know, we are humans, so it is easy, and it is first reaction just to argue. But when we will have bigger view, we will understand more. Think about me and God. Even as the pastor, you know, I try to make decisions right for all parishioners, not just for one, two people. I have people, you know, that they are helping me to make decisions in the parish, you know. But still we have some just this view, one parish, right? The bishop, no one parish. One diocese, right? But God, he sees everything. His view is fully ours, little. It is why we should trust our Lord fully. Because He is telling, I love you. He died on the cross for us. He prepared 
have him for all of us, you and me. And today Jesus is coming back home. You know that he will come back someday again. And then he will tell us, okay, now it's time. Go with me. I hope so. And you know what is so funny? Because we know that Jesus came from the Father and He's coming back to the Father, right? It is the same with, about us. You know, we came when we were born and someday we'll come back to the Father. See, it's the same way. So we've got, we are one family. There is a strong message coming through in a today's feast that the church must be a community in a mission guided by God's spirit and confident of God's protection. Individually and collectively, we are called to make disciples and the Lord empowers us to do that through His giving of the Holy Spirit. We need uh, to listen to Jesus and uh, to trust Him. And uh, like apostles, we can look on the sky, but we need to remember, Jesus will come back because He prepared heaven for us. Amen. Let us stand. Brothers and sisters, let us profess our faith together. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty. Amen. Of all things visible and invisible, I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, Light from light, true God from true God, begotten and not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for our men and for our salvation he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became a man. For our sake he was crucified at the Pontius Pilate, he suffered the death and was buried and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and His kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Our Lord Jesus Christ, who took his seat at God's right hand, remains with us and always works for our good. In his name, let us pray for our needs. That the victory of Jesus Christ over evil will fill the church with his saving power. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the compassion of Jesus Christ will fill leaders of governments with their concern, his concern with others. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the presence of Jesus Christ will fill the suffering with his consolation and strength. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the gospel of Jesus Christ will fill this assembly with zeal of service. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the end of abortion, let us pray to the Lord. Father most holy, we ask to hear our prayers 
so that in the name time between Jesus' ascension and his return in majesty, we may bear witness to your everlasting love for us, through Christ our Lord. sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord have sacrifice in your hands for the praise of the Lord of His name. We offer a sacrifice now in supplication, O Lord, to honor the wondrous ascension of your Son. Grant, we pray, that through this most holy exchange we too may rise up to the heavenly realms through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, the Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for the Lord Jesus, the King of glory, conqueror of sin and death, ascended today to the highest heavens as the angels gazed in wonder. Mediator between God and man, judge of the world and Lord of hosts, he ascended not to distance himself from our lowly state, but that we, his members, might be confident of following where he, our head, our founder, has gone before. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, Every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Oh, 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 oh,
who comes, who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the eyes. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. May call therefore these gifts we pray by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in a memory of me. The mystery of faith As we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church, spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, and Peter our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters, who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you for your Son, Jesus Christ. Through Him and with Him and in Him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all the glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, 
performed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to the apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Spiritual Communion my Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
body of Christ. The body of Christ. Amen. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who allow those on earth to celebrate divine mysteries, grant, we pray, that Christian hope may draw us onward to where our nature is united with you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please have a seat. I will have parish announcements. Today, 3 p.m., we'll have Eucharistic adoration in the church, so all are welcome. Just please remember to wear a mask and to keep the six feet social distance. You can see that pews are marked, so it is easy. If it's the family coming, you know, you can be together. If it's not family, you know, just sit when we have this short, uh, you know, tape, you know, the pew is marked. During week, 
from Monday to Friday from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. The church is open for private prayers. The Adoration Chapel still is closed, but in the church, what we have here? Blessed Sacrament, you know, we have Tabernaculum, so this, in our parish, red candle is telling us Jesus is present. So, you know, the church is open and you can come to pray and uh, just, you know, the same, wear a mask and social distance and that's, it's perfect. Also, I would like just to remind that the daily masses are now in our regular time, so 12.10. And from Monday to Friday, 11.50, we have reconciliation. So this regular calendar came back. Just confession for now is not in the, you know, confessional chapel, just in the music room. It's big room, so between the person and the priest is about 15 feet. You know, so it's longer, like double and more, you know, than the, you know, the social distance. So, you know, if people would like, just come sit, you know, in the choir area and we have regular time for confession. Next weekend, we will celebrate the Pentecost. So, if you plan to attend for the Mass in the church, please remember to call the office and to give the number of people who will attend. Because this is helpful for us, you know, to prepare everything. So, thank you so much for your cooperation. Important announcements, especially for parents who will come or are coming to the church with children. So please don't bring food and toys also, you know, for children, because we know that children are putting these toys on the pew or some chair, and, uh, you know, we are disinfecting the church after each mass, but still it could be a little more danger for children's health. So, you know, let's try to reduce, you know, this risk. So, no food, no cereals, and uh, no toys. And uh, so, today, 3 p.m., we'll have adoration. And uh, next Sunday, 3 p.m., also will have adoration. So, if you could, please plan and come, and we will pray together. Enough for today, right? Please stand for a final blessing. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, the Mass is ended. God our Father, we come to you in our need to ask your protection against the 2019 and coronavirus that has claimed lives and has affected many. We pray for your grace, for the people tasked with studying the nature and cause of this virus and its disease, and of stemming the tide of its transmission. Guide the hands and minds of medical experts that they may minister to the sick with competence and compassion, and of those governments and private agencies that must find cure and solution to this epidemic. We pray for those afflicted. May they be restored to health soon. Grant us the grace to work for the good of all and to help those in need. Grant this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Saint Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray, and the double prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, trust into hell Satan and the other evil spirits who prowl about the world for the ruin of souls. Amen. Have a wonderful and blessed Sunday and whole week.